Hello, and welcome to AIM International's Preparatory Tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM Training Instructor in the realm of Content Process and Information Management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Content Management a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module defines content management and explores the rationales for deploying it. It is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. Content management is the systematic collection and organizing of information that's to be used by a designated audience, business executives, customers, and so forth. Neither a single technology, nor a methodology, nor a process. It's a dynamic combination of strategies, methods, and tools used to capture, manage, store, preserve, and deliver information supporting key organizational processes throughout its life cycle. Capture, which is covered elsewhere in this course, boils down to entering content into the system. Manage is what you do next to it, so it can be found and used by whomever it's intended for. Storing it means finding an appropriate home in your infrastructure, be it a formal content management system or other information solution. Preserve refers to long-term care, archiving if you will, the practice of protecting it so it can be utilized however far into the future the organization needs it to be available. And deliver is all about putting the right information in the right people's hands right when they need it to be there. The length of this list provides a clue as to how content management differs from document management, which it incorporates in many important ways. Document management is one of the precursor technologies to content management, and not all that long ago was available solely on a standalone basis like its imaging, workflow, and archiving brethren. It provides some of the most basic functionality to content management, imposing controls and management capabilities onto otherwise dumb documents. Key features include check-in, check-out, and locking to coordinate the simultaneous editing of a document so one person's changes don't override another's. Version control, so tabs can be kept on how the current document came to be and how it differs from the version that came before. Rollback, to activate a prior version in case of an error or premature release. And audit trails, to permit the reconstruction of who did what to a document during the course of its life in the system. Document management eventually was subsumed into content management in no small measure because there's more information available to us today than ever before, and most of it is not being created by us. Thanks to the mainstreaming of a whole range of sources like the web, thumb drives, and smartphones, the need has accelerated to deal with information of all kinds, not just in terms of more media types like text versus image versus voice files, but also in terms of how structured, and thus how readily managed, it all is. Structured information is information that's highly defined and not only is intended to be processed by a computer program, but readily can be, like most of the information held in relational databases and acted upon by line of business solutions. Unstructured information is, well, information that does not have a fully defined structure and most likely will be read and used by humans. As examples, think of most of the information produced by common office applications, word processors, presentation programs, and the like. Semi-structured information is information that lies somewhere in between, like invoices, purchase orders, and receipts, which contain data to be computer processed, but which come in formats and layouts that first need to be identified and classified a task that's often handled by humans, but increasingly is being automated as the tools improve. This all becomes important when you consider the effect on your business that not managing these elements can have. Diminished utility, loss of time, loss of productivity, possible non-compliance with regulations or corporate policies, the risk of serious business interruption if key repositories die or natural disasters strike. None of them have happy outcomes. As illustrated here, effectiveness, efficiency, compliance, and continuity all combine in different proportions to drive the business case for content management in most organizations. 
The elements covered in this module are important because they may come into play at different times during the course of your information management events. As access, retention, and destruction policies dictate what kind of functionality you'll need to support. To recap, we discussed document management, structured versus unstructured versus semi-structured data, and leading business drivers. Next, you may wish to review the module on the content lifecycle. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.